Many of you might recall the video I did recently where I just addressed some players who were either not signed or wanted traded. So I decided to expand a little bit with this one as well and to also update one storyline. Starting off with Patrick Laine. Uh, Patrick Laine, unfortunately, since coming to Winnipeg, has been largely a media distraction. I think we can all recall the previous Fortnite conspiracy from a long time ago. It was kind of funny, but it was thought um, by some to have accounted for his slump of a season where he was only able to register 50 points in 2018-19 compared to his remarkable sophomore campaign. He notched 70 points with 44 of them being goals. And then for what seems like an eternity really, there's been circulating rumors that Lainey isn't happy in Winnipeg and wants to move on from Manitoba. Lainey's own agent, Mike, with a very risky last name to pronounce, went on to further substantiate these claims by stating that a trade would be mutually beneficial for both parties involved. And after an offseason with nothing really happening on the front except more hearsay, Lainey in a way kind of said in an interview at training camp what we all really knew or suspected. As he went on to say, even Wayne Gretzky got traded and didn't really negate the claims that he wanted to change his scenery. The forward, who has only one year left on his two-year extension, will ultimately expire as he if he's not traded prior to. And while many have seemed to gravitate towards the one-for-one -one quick solution of swapping the two disgruntled forwards, uh, Dubois and Laine, in my opinion, that's not going to happen. In fact, I'd really be shocked if it had to come to that. As Laine, as most of us know, it's a great goal scorer when he's hot. His shot is one of the best in the league, but when he gets going through his slumps and he can't find his game, uh, he's generally absent. Just like Ovechkin was, I think a lot of us can recall during his early years, uh, Line 8 often neglects to do what Coach Tortorella and the Jackets pretty much live by. Play a two-way game at both ends of the ice. For Yarko Kekalainen, even though Line 8 is a fellow fan, if he has any sense or even questions the Jackets coach first for consultation, as many do, before making a trade, he'll definitely think twice if he wants to avoid another PR nightmare, just like the one he already has on his hands with Dubois right now. Now, the Chicago Blackhawks uh, training camp commenced without several other key guys, unfortunately, including Kirby Doc, Jonathan Taze, and Alex Nylander, who were all sidelined due to medical reasons or injury. But one player in particular, as in longtime Blackhawk Brent Seabrook, his reason for not making an appearance still remains unclear, but according to The Athletic, the absence was not related to any lingering injuries or issues with surgery recovery, as he said last November that his hip had healed and he was looking forward to training camp with excitement. Seabrook, who had the worst season statistically of his entire career, looking at how management is making a push suddenly um, for out with the old, in with the new, combined with his troubling recent stats, we could see the 35-year-old hanging up the skates for good here shortly. At least, I wouldn't put him past it. We witnessed the defenseman scratch last season for multiple games in a row after Joe Quinville had long vacated the Windy City. Hopefully for Blackhawks fans and Seabrook's teammates, so will get some more clarity on the subject uh, released sooner rather than later. In the video I referred to during the introduction, I did bring up some discussion on the latest jacket to have become disgruntled under Coach Tortorella. And if any of you all are Spit and Chicklets listeners, they brought up an interesting angle on why the forward really wants out of Ohio. As I mentioned before, according to The Athletic, the relationship with Dubois and management apparently took a turn for the worse during contract negotiations. But as mentioned on Spit and Chicklets as well, Apparently, similar to William Nylander in his contract standoff we witnessed long ago, this player's dad may also be helping to pull the strings behind the scenes. And after the suggestion that his father, Eric, who is also like Michael Nylander, a former professional hockey player, might be giving his son some career advice, I decided to really look into it. Turns out, interestingly, Eric Dubois, since retiring from playing in the DEL, has been coaching for nearly 20 years and has been behind the bench for the Manitoba Moose as an assistant for nearly five seasons. Knowing that, 
and that the two have a close bond, and that Pierre is often known to consult his father for hockey advice. Could the obvious friction that came about between Dubois and Tortorella last postseason be the true motivator for the number one center to one out? Even though a trade is obviously going to happen eventually, I think it's important to remember that the team has no real obligation to orchestrate a trade at all. But it's never a good look when you have a key player not denying that he wants out. Ugh. Regardless whether it's during the season or in free agency, I think it's fair to say that Dubois will be traded before his two-year deal expires. 